It's Care Providers of Minnesota's The Inside Scoop, featuring your advocacy team, Patty Cullen, Toby Pearson, Aaron Bowie, and Todd Bush. This week's host, Patty Cullen. Good morning. You have the substitute teacher for the Inside Scoop this week, so don't misbehave and know there will not be a movie. So Toby and Aaron are at the Omnibus Health and Human Services Conference Committee this morning, so I'm pitching in to give you a little update on this week. This week was a flurry of late nights and finalization of all of the budget bills. Um, that passed every committee um, and ready into conference committee stage. So let's talk about the nursing home cuts and, and a few other things that are in the Omnibus Health and Human Services Bill. So the bill number is House File 2414. That is the Omnibus Health and Human Services Bill. And even though it's a House File number, that's the number used by both the House and the Senate when it comes to omnibus bills. The language looks different from the Senate version, but they are negotiating the language off of the same bill number. The difference is about 600 pages and several billion dollars. So it will be an interesting conference committee. Uh, we did send a message out earlier this week saying thanks to the Senate. Um, the Senate bill, um, which was Senate File 2452 and Senate File 92 merged together. That is now the Senate position going into conference committee. Does not cut nursing facilities. It does not include the $68 million state chair cuts that the House Omnibus Bill does. Um, it also provides an enhanced EW payment um, for certain seniors if you have a high level of elderly waiver. It funds a nursing home moratorium. It funds increases for ombudsman, and it includes language that we support on electronic monitoring. Currently, the Senate version of the omnibus bill does not include the 170-page assisted living licensure bill. That is a separate standing bill uh, currently sitting in the Finance Committee, Senate File 8, and we are trying to figure out how the end-stage negotiations are going to work when you have it in a different place and a lot different language. The House version of the omnibus bill does include all of the assisted living licensure language, including about a dozen provisions that we are really strongly opposed to. For example, the mandate that, sh that all assisted living um, serve individuals who are on MA. Um, you can't discriminate based on payer source. The House bill also includes language in assisted living licensure allowing residents and their families to sue you for violations of the Bill of Rights privately. So there are a few big things that we do not support in the assisted living licensure, nor do we support the cuts. So going into conference committee, it's really lopsided support. Um, we support the Senate bill um, and not the House bill going into it. The conferees um, have been appointed and it's important if you know any of the conferees to um, shore up support for the Senate bill um, and encourage the House to rethink the wrongs that they have provided in their bill. So I'm just going to rattle them off. Uh, Senate conferees, Senator Michelle Benson, Senator Jim Abler, Senate Doctor, Senator, Senator Doctor, whatever, um, Scott Jensen, um, the Democratic representative is Senator John Marty from Roseville, and then Senator Utke is the last Republican. On the House side, the chief conferee is Representative Tina Liebling from Rochester, uh, chair of the HHS Finance. Again, generally the chairs of the finance committees and the policy chairs are appointed to these to lead the negotiations, and then they pick their friends who have provisions in there. So, House. Uh, Representative Liebling, Representative Moran, who chairs the Policy Committee, Representative Lori Halverson, Representative Jennifer Schultz, who chairs the um, old long-term care or older adults division um, in the House, and then the Republican is Senator Rod Hamilton from Southwestern Minnesota. So they will start today meeting. Over the weekend, the leadership of the House and the Senate, along with the governor, are supposed to be negotiating on targets. What does that mean? 
That means each individual bill going into conference committee from the House and the Senate spent different amounts of money. And together, they need to figure out in a 40-some billion dollar budget how they are going to allocate both revenues and expenditures, which means how much is the tax bill going to raise, how much of the budget surplus is going to be spent, and and what kind of new money and reductions are going to be in each of the divisions. So those targets are supposed to be, according to a letter that they've all signed, are supposed to be negotiated by May 5th, and I think that's early next week. So we'll see if they can do that. So this week, uh, this weekend, because for us there's now seven working days, um, this weekend will be the Omnibus um, Health and Human Services Conference Committee starting today. We have also been meeting daily with the stakeholders on assisted living licensure fixes. We, if the language is going to pass, we are working hard to make sure that it's language that, that operationally can be, can be implemented. So we have a team of staff attending meetings every day, including tomorrow there's a good 10 to 5 marathon day with the hopes that we will have language that's solid enough that can be put on the um, omnibus conference committee bill or one of the bills on the floor um, next week. That's where we're at today for Inside Scoop. Um, follow the messages um, in the newsletters. Tell the Senate, stay strong, stay powerful, be an Avenger, Senate bill, Senate position in the omnibus health and human services bill. Call your senator, say Senate strong. Thanks. Have a good weekend.